Hey everyone, John Fly here. We're gonna do yet another brew today. We're gonna be doing a chocolate milk stout. It'll be an all grain recipe and I'm excited. I've never done a chocolate milk stout before. This will be my fourth batch ever and uh, I'm excited. Today's recipe is from Northern Brewer and it's an all grain, like I said, and it's a milk stout. It's gonna be brewed with lactose sugar and uh, it's gonna have some cacao, cacao, cacao nibs uh, for the uh, chocolate. Uh, it's supposed to be an opaque ebony pint capped with dark foam and flavor reminiscent of a straight espresso laced with chocolate liquor and sweetened with Torbonado sugar, or Torbonado sugar. Very full bodied, round, and filling with bittersweet hints around the edges. Excellent as a nourishing restorative or as an ice cream topping. Huh. So the original gravity is going to be one, uh, we're shooting for 1.049. My, my recipe actually, um, it may go a little bit higher just based on the water usage. Uh, it also says the fermentation schedule is one to two weeks in the primary and one to two weeks in the secondary. I'll probably just do three, four weeks in a primary and then two weeks for bottle conditioning. Ingredients today are, uh, we're gonna be splitting this batch in half. This is a five gallon recipe, but I have an Anvil 6.5, so I'll be doing half that. We may, may, we may, we may go to 2.75 gallons, so I've gotta do the measurements there, but uh, so we're gonna split all of these mash ingredients so we got about a little over four pounds of Pale L malt, uh, 0.375 uh, of uh, chocolate malt, Fawcett Pale, uh, 0.125 pounds of English Extra Dark Crystal, and 0.375 of Weyermann Carafa 3. Boil times today will be uh, 60 minute hop edition, and we're gonna be putting in We're gonna be using cluster hops, 7.4% alpha, and uh, we'll be using the Safel US05 yeast. Later on in the process, we'll be doing the nibs. We'll probably soak those in like a vodka or something, and then we also have lactose. Today I'm using spring water, four gallons, maybe a little bit more if I need to, and again, we're using the uh, Anvil 6.5 Foundry. Uh, great all-in-one system. Go continuing on with the recipe here, we got, um, we're gonna do a uh, single infusion uh, mash, uh, 152 Fahrenheit for 60 minutes. Mash out at 170 for 10 minutes. And again, those hops are at um, 60 minutes and then 30 minutes. Well, the lactose goes in at the 60 minutes as well, so that's good to know. Uh, the cacao nibs soaked overnight in vodka. Uh, those will actually be two weeks later in the secondary fermentation. I'll probably just add those to the primary fermenter, but yeah. Excited. Over here we got some equipment. Uh, we got our new Anvil High Precision Digital Scale. Uh, we got some Biofine uh, bio Clear Clarifier. Uh, Whirlflock tablets, those probably counteract each other. Uh, we got our uh, Spider Hop, Hop Spider. Our uh, test tube to test our gravities. Trusty Star Sand for some sanitation. Digital thermometer, yeast nutrients, uh, TDS, meter, pH meter, and we also picked up a refractometer uh, just for comparison on testing those gravities. Go ahead and uh, add our spring water now. Gonna leave the uh, grain basket in. 
I think we'll keep the uh, basket holder out for now. Two different kinds of spring water today. Uh, one, uh, these, are, these are around, we'll test it, but these are probably going to mix together probably about 160 to 180 on the, uh, on the uh, total dissolvables. I'm guessing about 170 something. But. Uh, 171, yeah, 171, 170, it's fluctuating, 172, okay, haven't really messed around with water chemistry that much, I do have all the stuff, gypsum, uh, all the different salts to add if I wanted to play around with that one day, but haven't had a bad brew yet, so Probably just keep with the spring water for now. Got our button down here. Hold that down. Now we're gonna take our uh, temperature up to 150. We're gonna put it about 156. And then the power. I'll put it at 100. So that's gonna take a little while. Started that at 9.18 a.m. on heating up the three gallons initial. Okay, it's uh, 10.03, so that took about 45 minutes or so uh, to get up to 156. So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, mash in. now. I did get a five, like I say, a five gallon uh, recipe kit and I need to pare it down. So I did some calculations, hopefully they're correct. I'm gonna be putting in um, two of these big Pyrex cups and then a third of a Pyrex cup of the grains. And then we'll mash that in and see how it looks. And then we may add additional grains depending. I did end up adding the fourth gallon of water in here, so uh, let's get mashed in. Because this was, all of these grains were mixed at the store, then, um, I, uh, I had to make sure that they were thoroughly mixed, so I just mixed them up in the bag and uh, because again, you got proportions of different grains and you need to get all the, all the right uh, grain mixtures so you can All right, before I put in <clears throat> the additional third, I'm gonna go ahead and stir this in. Looks like I can go a bit more. Okay, hopefully my math is correct and that's gonna give us a good, uh, 
good proportion, good gravity. Shooting for right around 10, high 1040s. Uh, mash in started at 10, uh, let's say 10.05 a.m. Temperature should be dropping. We're gonna take it down to 152. And I'm also gonna change my power setting down to 75. Just at that time, uh, the temperature doesn't drop as much as I thought it would, but we need to get it down to 152. Maybe in the future, I'll, I won't go as high on the strike temp. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stir this around just a little bit more. It looks good. And what I'm gonna do is, I still got some stuff coming through the bottom of the grain basket, the malt pipe, but um, what we're gonna do is let that set for 10 minutes. Computer, set 10 minute timer. Computer, set 10 minute timer. I will let that uh, the grain bed uh, form at the bottom. Uh, and the reason again that we're going to let that grain bed form at the bottom is because we're going to start the circulation pump and we want to have a good bed at the bottom to kind of make it so not a lot of stuff uh, gets through those uh, holes at the bottom. So. Minutes. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to start our circulation pump. It's been 10 minutes, grain bed has settled. Oh, looking good. So, what we're going to do is come down here to the valve, open that up. And then we're going to turn on the pump. Pump is working. I'm going to put on the shield uh, so it can spread out the uh, circulation. Our circulation is not too aggressive as to clog like it did on our last brew. Looking good. So again, we're mashing in at uh, 153, trying to get to 152, and we're circulating. Computer, set timer for 15 minutes. In 15 minutes, we will um, basically just kind of rake the top third of the mash in. So while that is uh, waiting, we're gonna go ahead and unbox our brand new portable optical refractometer. And I have several different uh, methods for measuring gravity. And this one, I don't have to wait for uh, the wort to cool down in order to measure the gravity, which is kind of handy. I just put a drop underneath this uh, screen. And then I look through the uh, eyepiece and it'll show me the, uh, the gravity. So we'll be measuring it pretty soon here. So excited to have this little device. We also have a tilt hydrometer that will measure while it's fermenting, which is nice. And then we got the traditional hydrometer. All right, it's coming up to the 15 minute timer. So we're going to rake the top. I'm gonna close the valve. No, I'm gonna turn off the pump. Close the valve. 
And then let's see how this is looking here. Computer stop timer. And we're just gonna gently rake top third. My last three batches have been quite <clears throat> watery, but because I'm doing no sparge, I'm still getting good numbers, but comment below if you think this is too watery. Don't want to disturb that grain bed on the bottom. Okay, we'll go ahead and do that again in about 15 minutes. Computer set timer for 15 minutes. Computer set timer for 15 minutes. Turn on the valve. And turning on the pump. I'm just sitting here. I got time. It's clear to see. Looking good. Looking like a chocolate milk stout. All right, so <clears throat> we're na it's now 11.05 a.m. <clears throat> We've been uh, mashing at 152 for an hour. We're gonna go ahead and do a mash out. I did turn down the uh, recirculation a bit here because it was uh, getting it was a little too aggressive up top and not draining properly. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, mash out at 170. And we'll set the power back up. 95. Uh, yeah. Computer, set timer for 10 minutes. Computer, stop timer. That was our mash 60 minute timer and now we got a 10 minute timer that we're gonna go up to well actually I need to get up to 170 before I well that's a good question maybe you guys can answer that below in comments do I start the 10 minute timer now for the mash out or do I wait till I get up to 170 that is a good question And then we're going to twist it. Let it sit on those arms. Yeah, looks good there. So there's our mash. And it's now doing a beautiful drain into the kettle. So good stuff. We'll let that drain for about 10 minutes and then we'll start our boil. All right, one thing that we have to do is measure out our, um, our lactose. Um, this is for a five gallon batch and we're doing more Close, no, closer to a three gallon batch, probably 2.75. So I'm gonna take my anvil scale. I'm gonna, looks like this is 16.47 ounces. Um, I'm gonna weigh my bowl here. I'm gonna hit the, the zero out button here because that's now zeroed out. Yep. Then we're gonna pour, <clears throat> we're gonna cut this open and pour all of the lactose into the bowl. We'll go ahead and weigh that. 
That is 16.24 ounces. There's nine. Oops, that goes quick. There's 9.5. There's 9.6. So that's how much lactose we're gonna use at the 60 minute boil mark. That's handy. All right, now we're going to go ahead and raise our temperature up to 202, sorry, 212. And that'll start the uh, rise in temperature up to a boil. This thing is almost done draining. And we'll lift this basket off here pretty soon. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and measure off um, the hops. 0.375 for the 60 minute, yeah, of the, clust of the cluster hops. So we'll go ahead and open that up. We'll zero out this bowl. Ooh, the cluster hops. Oh, I love that smell. Okay. We'll measure out. We're not gonna, we're gonna do a little bit more than half. So half of point, point 0.75 ounces is point 0.375. So we might go point 0.45 on the ounces. There's point 0.46. So. There's point three. There's point four five. So yeah, we're gonna do point four five of the cluster at the 60 minutes. So I'm gonna make a note here. Very important to take notes. So point four five. Computer, what is 60% of 75? Yeah, so that's 45. All right, so we got that. And then um, we got the lactose ready. I think we're good to go. So uh, we started the rise of the temperature up at about 1130. So we'll see how long it takes to get up to a boil. Okay, we're at 200 degrees and we're at a boil. So I'm not sure if it's the altitude here in Utah or if I do boil at 200 degrees. But uh, we'll go ahead and add our 60 minute hop addition. We gotta really avoid a boil over here. So I'm gonna pour these into the hop spider. Going in. Looking good. I dropped the hop spider down just so it would get a little bit lower because we're only doing about th three, a little over three gallons here in the wart. So again, that's cluster hops in at 60 minutes. Now, I'm not sure how much of a foam up or boil up we're gonna get with the lactose. This will be interesting. So I'm gonna take my lactose. Just sprinkle that in. Just curious what the getting much of a reaction, so that's good. 
All right. Kind of stopped the boil a little bit, but should rise back up here pretty soon. All right, Anvil 6.5 doing its job. We're gonna do a, <clears throat> instead of a 30 minute hop addition, we're gonna do a, a, sorry, instead of a 15 minute left on the boil addition, we're gonna do 30 minute left on the boil. And I, again, I measured out 0.45 ounces of, of the hops. 0.45 of the cluster. Okay, last hop addition in. So now we got about 30 minutes left on the boil. All right, uh, there's about 10 minutes left on the boil. I'm a little late doing this, but we're gonna add the uh, Whirl Flock, ooh, Whirl Flock tablet into the, uh, into the brew. About 10 minutes left on the boil. And we're, stall uh, we're also sanitizing our warp chiller. Someone pointed out that I had these on the wrong uh, ends the other day, so we'll see if it works a little bit better this way. I don't understand why it would make a difference, but we're gonna be checking for leaks, of course, and all that good stuff. So about 10 minutes left on the boil. All right, uh, we're done with the boil. It's been a 60 minute boil. We added some yeast nutrient forgot to film that part. We're gonna go ahead and cycle the power to off. And then we're going to turn on our wart chiller hose and get the chilling process started. All right, we've started our chiller here at 12.52 p.m. It's uh, dropping rapidly. I did uh, end up ordering a uh, jaded brewing Scylla. I just wanted to compare. I just know it's got a little more pipe than the default, but it's nice that this comes with a uh, one that, that works. We're obviously chilling down pretty quick here. In the future, I might uh, you know, circulate this in, a, in like a chest of water with ice or something, but right now we're just draining it. Already at 160, so we'll let this get down to uh, about 68 degrees, and we'll get ready to pitch our yeast. While this is going on, I'm also gonna maybe put on the lid. Okay, so it's uh, 1.32 p.m., and that took a while, so so yeah, so here we are. Uh, it's reading 70 degrees, 40 minutes later. Um, I need to cut down that time. So maybe that uh, jaded uh, shilla or cellar or whatever you call it will um, expedite this cool down process. Again, I like the fact that they include one with the all-in-one package, but I want one that's just a bit quicker. Anyway, we got the uh, fermentation bucket sanitized. We got the tubing sanitized and everything. We're getting ready to transfer into the fermentation vessel. So, yeehaw. All right, so let's take off our lid here momentarily. And open up this valve a little bit here. And we're transferring in.
that can't be right. There's no way that's right. It says 1074, 1075. That can't be right. A couple drops here. And again, we're gonna. That can't be right. 1070? Ha! What the snack? All right, I'm gonna drop the uh, tilt hydrometer. And this has been sanitized, so we're gonna take this tilt, drop it in there. That'll give us a gravity reading as well. Okay, tilt in the fermenter. And that'll start uploading to my tilt pie server via Bluetooth. We'll see what that gravity says, but this is crazy. Um, yeah. I think we'll uh, pitch our yeast. Now, before I said I was going to use a Safel US05, but no, I'm going to use Safel uh, US, or sorry, Safel S04. That's, this is a dry L yeast. So, we'll take our sanitized scissors, cut open that pack. Okay, I'm kind of shocked, but calculations were way off. We actually hit uh, 1072 on the gravity. It's gonna be a strong one. Don't know why. Too much grains. <laughs> but we're gonna pitch our yeast. So here we go, Safel. US 04, or just S04. Make sure that, yeah. Okay, yeast has been pitched. Go ahead and put our lid on, say goodbye to our chocolate milk stout for two weeks. Lids on tight. Take our sanitized Bung. Pop that in to the top. Make sure that's tight and secure. We're going to put a blow off tube on it. I probably should taste it. Oh, yeah. That's very sweet. Oops, didn't seal one side, our bad. All right, so there we go. We're gonna, we made a mess. And we're gonna put that, uh, put the blow off kit and into the uh, chest freezer that's turned off, temperature controlled by an ink bird for, uh, for two weeks. We'll be able to watch the spreadsheet I'll link the spreadsheet below in the video so you can see the gravity if you're watching in this first week or two. But it's been fun. That's our fourth batch ever. 
and uh, yeah, I'm having too much fun with this stuff. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time. Click, like, and subscribe.